was the first big reform push of 2012 and also the most high profile. In January, the Prime Minister's Principal Secretary met leading industrialists to solve the power crisis. Now, 2012 is coming to a close with very little progress. Bloomberg TV India now learns that the issues will be sorted out only by mid or late January and the fuel supply agreement deadline of December 30th is all set to be missed. Now, to understand all aspects of the story, we have with us Mehek, George, Priyal and Priyank. Also joining us will be Ashok Kurana of the Association of Power Producers or APP. But before we get to our team of reporters, let's first hear what Power Minister Jyotir Aditya Sindhya said last week on a fresh deadline. Issues that needed identification, discussion and clarity. That clarity has been obtained today and we will be ready to sign those FSAs over the next month. One the third, let me finish. The third issue with regard to issues with regard to coal uh, and quality of coal, those have also been discussed and deliberated in great detail. We've uh, are decided to go to the next stage on that. Uh, some of those issues are related to FSAs that will be signed in the next month, where there will be no distinction uh, between private and public companies, and the same norm will be evolved for both the sectors. With regard to quality of coal also, uh, we have arrived at a conclusion and I would again like to thank Sri Prakashji for a very, very proactive and a positive role uh, in that approach. Uh, and that will be put in place over the next couple of months. All right, uh, Mehak, you go first. You heard the power minister. They're saying FSAs will be in place by the 30th. Your sources tell you that this won't be met. Meanwhile, what needs to be done to get the price pooling formula in place by next month. In fact, Mehek, uh, we had uh, earlier the other deadline, which was uh, December 30th, and now we have the power minister talking about by a month. So what really, and where really does this entire power crisis being sorted out issue really rest at this point of time? Well, really, it's been a back and forth of many dates and many deadlines between the Prime Minister's office, the Coal Ministry, as well as the Power Ministry. But let's give this to the government. At this point in time, it's the first time in three years that a Coal Minister and a Power Minister have sat face-to-face -face, uh, with their officers. And it was a two-hour-long meeting that took place on 17th of December, and they have now set a deadline to it. Uh, remember all of this again happening because the Prime Minister's office stepped in uh, in the second week of December uh, to push this through again. What are we really talking about? We are talking about 60,000 megawatts uh, of uh, FSAs yet to remain to be signed. Now, my sources have told me that 20th Jan is, uh, is a likely date uh, by which all 50 fuel supply agreements will be signed. Uh, and the power and the coal ministry have said that they will work together in the next 10 days to float a draft cabinet note uh, on the pooling of coal prices. And remember, this still remains a big bone of contention. Uh, this pooling of coal prices, sources who are working on this formula of pooling of coal prices, which has never been done in this country before, tell us that they are yet to submit a report uh, to the power ministry to vet this. I've spoken to both sides, uh, the coal and the power side, and uh, uh, coal in their sources as well, and they say this, there, there is a still big hitch will be this, this pooling of coal price formula. They will have to come to, uh, sit on the table and be okay with the formula that the CEA gives in. Uh, so at this point in time, yes, fuel supply agreements will be signed. Coal India, uh, Coal India board will not have to wet uh, another fuel supply agreement. When the mob, mo model FSA, which was done about two months ago, is what will stand. However, as far as pooling of coal prices goes, this essentially means that Coal India will have to import if it doesn't supply 80% of the promised uh, uh, coal uh, that it'll, uh, to power companies. It will all boil down to that pooling of uh, coal prices formula, which the cabinet also will have to wet. So yes, they've come together here. What we're looking at is a dead deadline of 20th Jan. Now, that's the internal deadline that all the stakeholders are talking about. And remember, this is the first deadline that the new power minister, Jyotiraditya Tissindya, has put, and he will definitely be tested uh, on this, on whether he can deliver as he's spoken. All right, let's move on. A large part of the problem in fuel supply has been Coal India's falling production. Now, to meet its target, Coal India will have to produce over 40% of its annual target in just one quarter. George is here with more details on this. Uh, George, tell us, uh, what do the numbers look like? 
Well, yes, in fact, production remains a main concern as far as Coal India is concerned. At this point of time, the company has witnessed the first degrowth in its output for the first time in FY13 with a degrowth of 2% witnessed in the month of uh, November versus an average growth of 9%. And this is very critical as it comes at a time when the company has to meet almost 43% of its target. That's the 464 empty production target it has set for FY13 in these four months of December to March. So very critical at this point in time as the company has only met 57% in the last eight uh, odd months. This is primarily due to the shortfall uh, uh, which has been impacted by the recent cyclone Neelam, the rainfalls which was witnessed in the months of June to August as well as the festive season in October and November as well. So clearly that is a very major implication as far as the production is concerned and Planning Commission on the other hand expects the growth to actually, the demand for coal to jump as much as 41% for the next in the next five years as well and it comes in a time when coal inventory level is at a very critical point considering the fact that uh, the Pardi port is has a lot of norms restricting the uh, imported coal dispatches, especially in terms of the license and storage norms, which is currently at play. So clearly that is a major concern and imports are very essential to meet uh, the shortfall as far as domestic production is concerned, to meet the FSA requirements for Coal India at this point of time. And there's been a rising gap as far as the power demand for coal is concerned versus the coal production at this point of time in the last three years. And a lot of analysts believe that there could be a shortfall if the domestic production growth is less than 7.5% as far as Coal India is concerned and uh, Coal India at the same time sees a shortage of 20% in the next five years as far as domestic coal production is concerned and also at the same point of time uh, they need to import anywhere between 18 to 19 MT in the next uh, one or two years if all the companies sign FSAs and this is likely to jump the imports are likely to jump to uh, levels of 50 MT uh, in the in the next 3-4 uh, years by 2017 at this point of uh, is what a lot of analysts believe and uh, FI13 coal availability as far as the power sector is concerned is pegged at somewhere just below 350 MT but this comes at a very critical time when the demand supply gap is likely to widen to levels of 4 450 MT, which is close to the production target of 464 MT, which is set uh, this time around as far as Coal India is concerned. So it is very essential for the company to ramp up production and to meet the FSA requirements and to supply uh, coal at uh, reasonable levels. But also at the same time, they would need uh, to uh, lower e-auctions and also quicker clearances, which is very essential for Coal India at this stage. All right, George. Well, that's not the only problem. Even as negotiations on these FSAs continue, Coal India also has a legal issue to deal with. The matter is already before court. Let's find out from Priyal what the implications of that could be. Priyal, uh, a large part of the issues which have been raised before the courts uh, would have a bearing on the process that the government would follow from here, depending on what the court decides. What is the cases? What are the issues that have been raised there? Well, uh, Vivek, it is uh, essentially through the minority shareholder, the Children's Investment Fund, which has moved Delhi High Court and Calcutta High Court in a two-way approach. Firstly, the Delhi High Court in terms of the government interference that led to a uh, sort of reversal of coal prices increase that was decided by the company. Uh, what the uh, minority investor, TCIF, really claims is that the government interference uh, is something that the, uh, that the court should direct uh, uh, against and also uh, should consider it non -est. As far as the Calcutta High Court, it's more in terms of the directors and their fiduciary responsibility, which, uh, which TCIF claims that they did not follow, which resulted in loss to uh, the coal India, uh, you know, the entire uh, company as far as uh, their policies were concerned. However, uh, if, as far as the Delhi High Court status is concerned, it is now uh, the TCIF which has to file a rejoinder given that the government has Coal India has filed uh, their, their response to the court where they have claimed that, uh, you know, a TCIF is looking at forum shopping in terms of going against the company and this was very much part of uh, their IPO when it had come out that there will be certain decisions that will be taken which would be on in interest of, uh, of public. However, interestingly, as it pans out, given that the Delhi High Court case is in May and we, we are uh, uh, you know, approximately looking at one month of any policy decision as far as the coal pricing is concerned, uh, what a lot of legal experts uh, really uh, claim is that in that case, if there is a policy decision taken by the government in terms of the coal prices or in terms of the FSA, then probably the courts may not be able to intervene in the policy of the government and then the issue that will remain is essentially the suit or the compensation that the minority investor would be uh, really looking at uh, and that's where it, runs, uh, it, it will stand at because the writ, if at all, the policy comes and the government policy comes therein will become infructuous because the policy will have impact on what the decision of the company takes. 
All right, Priyal, uh, let's also go across uh, to Priyank now, who tells us what are the unfinished issues, the unresolved issues as far as the power sector is concerned. Priyank. So let's firstly start off with the timeline itself when we talk about what we're actually talking about out here. Now from Jan 18 where you had that important PMO meet that actually took place to Feb 15 where you had the PMO directing saying the FSAs need to be signed till the time December 26th right now. FSA is still are in limbo, continues. You still have a bunch of issues, nothing's been resolved as far as that's concerned. Same time, FSAs are yet to be signed. You also have concerns regarding pool pricing that tussle still goes on. There's been no clarity as yet on that particular aspect. Financial restructuring is yet to be adopted. Remember, that's the other thing that we were discussing just a couple of uh, weeks back as well. Where SEB restructuring in itself was a huge landmark reform that was actually announced. But the update and the progress on that hasn't really taken place to what the, Anderson, what the expectations were. Now, the, the, the issues out here is that the power sector requires coal urgently. For a simple reason, let me, let me throw off some stats out here. Now, power station with subcritical coal inventory levels at a three-year high. So, what I'm talking about is here that 49 stations are operating with less than 7 days of coal inventory. That's all the coal that they have. Just 7 days of inventory is lying with them. And hence this urgent requirement of coal to actually be dispersed to these power plants itself. At the same time, just to give something to the power ministry itself, you had a bunch of reforms, uh, you had a bunch of steps come in terms of the way you have the tariff hikes that have taken place. The average hike that we've seen this year itself is somewhere in the range of around about 15% or so. There have been a couple of other factors like fuel adjustment surcharge also has been adopted by discounts but still Clearly, a lot more is required. All right. Uh, joining me now on the show is Ashok Khurana, who's the Director General Association of Power Producers. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Khurana, for coming by. You've been listening in to what our reporters have been bringing about the 360 degree, the various issues that still remain unresolved as far as the power sector is concerned. We started this year, 2012, with no less than the PMO saying we are going to address this issue the principal secretary convened meetings after meetings, but we still pretty much seem to be where we were at the beginning of the year. No, I'll say, I wouldn't say we are beginning of the year. A great amount of progress has been made. However, there still remain issues which are unresolved. I fully agree that the Ministry of Coal and the Ministry of Power have not moved with that speed which they should have moved. But now we understand that both the ministers met and they have ironed out the differences over there. And we'll have an FSA, which at least doesn't have irritants over there. See, my idea is more than FSA, what we need is a coal. If you really see, since the time many companies have signed the FSAs, the coal actually reaching the plant is very less than the ACQ. Because as per the PMO directive, they have set 65% of AS, ACQ over there. But actually reaching the plant is... 38 to 50 percent. Therefore, all the projects which have come after 2009 are working around 45 percent PLF. Now, that's very bad because they get their fixed recovery charges 85 percent. So, the, all these plants are bleeding. In fact, it is very wrong to assume that the bleeding is only taking place in the private sector. It's equally in the state sector and the public sector. The only difference is the state sector and the public sector enjoy the luxury of deemed generation. Therefore, their bleeding actually shows in the discom and increasing losses. So if you see the holistic sense of power sector, we need coal to ensure that all plants work at 85% of PLF. And that's what the Prime Minister assured all of us on the 18th January meeting. And that is only possible, that is, to ramp up domestic production. The FS is only a legal agreement between two parties over there. And then there are issues of non-adherence to FSA. But those only are legal issues. Real issue is the coal supply to power plants. And that is only possible if you import in the huge quantity and meet the deficit. And for that, what is imperative is to come to a level of pooling of coal pricing as quickly as possible. Because unless you come to that decision, coal will not be available. 10%, 5% here and there, the plants will still not work and the country will not get the power and the plants will remain standard. Therefore, right. Mr. Khurana, let me interrupt need you of here. the hour is to come to a conclusion on pricing a pool. 
Right. Mr. Khurana, you have yeah. very nicely articulated the fact that the power sector is bleeding, continues to bleed. The most important issue of coal supply is unresolved. Yet you are saying we've made a lot of progress. The government's made a lot of progress. Why would you give this pat on the back to the government? What has changed? The coal issue is still unresolved. I'll tell you, since 2009 to 12, not a single FSA was signed. The supply of coal was on ad hoc basis. At least now we see the broad contours of coal supply emerging. Otherwise, there was completely uncertainty. At least now we know what is government trying to achieve at. It's only got to implementation part is left. The policy guidelines to Coal India Limited is very clear that they need to supply 80% of AC2 with 65 domestic and 15% imported coal. And imported coal will go on the cool pooling price. That is the entire price increase would get divided in the entire coal base. Now, that's a policy directive. 2009 to 12, this uh, short, shortage of coal was in 2010, 11, 11, 12. There was no direction. There was no policy guidelines. At least now we have a set of policy guidelines where both the ministries are working. I agree. These decisions could have been operationalized much before. We have PMO took the decision as back as February, March in this year. But we still see it's better than earlier. Because earlier there were no FSS and no certainty of the future contours. How will the coal, be, coal shortage would be met? Now we so can discuss that. We know the broad contours. We can discuss the operationalization, implementation details, other things. So you are basically, Mr. Khurana, very happy. And you believe 2013 will be a great year for the power sector. My idea is I am not saying I am very happy. I am saying... A step forward has been taken. It is much better than living in uncertainty. Now we know what government is thinking, what government policy directives are. Basically, we are not happy with the CIL because it is the CIL who has been finding reasons every time to delay the entire process. Now you earlier see the FSA they came out earlier did not have any difference between PSU FSAs and the private sector. When they came up now with a new FSA, they made discrimination. So, some of the other Coal India Limited has been finding reasons to get out of the policy directives and they are supported by the board. I am really surprised. Why isn't the board asking them to meet their mandate? Coal India is a monopoly and they have a mandate under the NCDP to meet the entire normative requirement of coal for power sector and if need be to import and the policy directive of NCDP way back in 2007 clearly lays out the prices would be adjusted accordingly. They actually did not need any of the directives. If the board had insisted the management to meet the mandate given by government, we wouldn't have reached this problem. The thing lies with Coal India. They have to gear up their production. Mr. And import the coal to meet the deficit. Right. Mr. Khurana, whether it is the government or whether it is CIL, my question was more about the fact that we pretty much have not been able to resolve the issues that we thought would have been resolved through the year. That was really my question. But thank you very much for joining us here and sharing You're your right. perspective. You're right. Hopefully, 2013 will be the year when all these issues will get ironed out. Thank you very much for joining us again.